Uh, we wanted to, to call this conference to answer, I guess, a, just a bunch of questions we've been getting throughout the day uh, in piecemeal fashion. We're just going ahead and, and clear the air for everyone. We are opening up a case uh, with an investigation with regard to the suspected uh, activities involving the 48 migrants from Venezuela that, as we understand it at this point, the facts of the case at this point, are that on uh, Wednesday, September 14th, uh, here in Bear County in the city of San Antonio, yeah. Oh yeah, uh, our understanding just, is that so, a Venezuelan um, migrant uh, was paid of what we would call a bird dog fee to recruit approximately 50 migrants from the area around a migrant resource center on San Pedro uh, here in San Antonio. Uh, as we understand it, 48 migrants were uh, lured, I will use the word lured, uh, under false pretenses uh, on, into, into staying at a hotel for a couple of days. Uh, they were taken by airplane. At a certain point, they were shuttled to an airplane uh, where they were flown to Florida and then eventually flown to Martha's Vineyard. Again, under false pretenses is the, the, the information that we have, that they were promised work. They were promised the solution to several other problems. They were taken to uh, Martha's Vineyard from what, from what we can gather, uh, for nothing, for little more than a photo op, video op, and then they were unceremoniously stranded in Martha's Vineyard. Um, what infuriates me the most about this case is that here we have 48 people that are already on, on hard times, uh, right? They are here legally in our country at that point. They have every right to be where they are, and I believe that they were preyed upon. Somebody came from out of state, preyed upon these people, um, lured them with promises of, of a better life, which is what they were absolutely looking for, and with the knowledge that they were going to cling to whatever hope they could, they could be offered for a better life, uh, to just be uh, exploited and uh, hoodwinked into making this trip to Florida and then onward to Martha's Vineyard for what I believe to be nothing more than political posturing uh, to make a point. Well, look, we all know that during a, a political campaign, things can get nasty things can get out of hand, but when you're playing with human lives of people that are already in a desperate situation, people that, that, that again, had every right to be where they were, but were lured under false pretenses, that does tend to bother um, me quite a bit. And so we, we are absolutely opening up an investigation into this. Since uh, this past weekend, I've been uh, talking to at least one non-governmental organization involved in the case, uh, LULAC, uh, national. Also been talking to at least one attorney involved with uh, representing these folks that are still up on the on the East Coast, uh, as well as several members of the media, local and national. Um, and all indications are that at this point, we are going to be opening an investigation. It is way too early for me to start uh, naming any suspects. We do have the names of some suspects involved that we believe are persons of interest in this case at this point. But I won't be parting with those names. Uh, I think, to be to be fair, I think everybody on this call knows who those names are already. So I won't be naming any of them. But suffice suffice it to say, we will be opening up the case. El, el departamento del sheriff del condado Bejar estamos abriendo una investigación tocante uh, una, un viaje de 48 uh, inmigrantes que ellos estaban aquí en la ciudad de San Antonio, el condado de Bejar. Y la semana pasada, el miércoles día 14, la semana pasada Una persona se les acercó, les ofreció uh, nueva vida en, en otro estado. Ellos los pusieron en un hotel por dos días, los llevaron por, en, en avión a Florida y luego los llevaron para Martha's Vineyard, que está en Massachusetts, otro, otro estado aquí en, en otra área del, del país, donde a ellos los dejaron después de que ellos uh, los, los esposaron uh, la, los, los medios locales de allí, de, de Martha's Vineyard. Entonces, nosotros ahorita no tenemos, sí tenemos información tocante a sospechosos, pero en estos momentos no vamos a dar los nombres de esos sospechosos. Pero ya sé que mucho del, de una, la mayoría del, del público que saben de este caso ya saben los nombres esos. Ahorita yo nomás no, no los voy a nombrar aquí en este reporte, pero sí les podemos decir definitivamente que nosotros estamos abriendo una investigación criminal en este caso y vamos a ver qué cargos se vayan a enfrentar las personas que están involucradas con este caso. Any questions you all might have on this? 
Sheriff, buenas tardes. Amador Narcia de Univisión. Preguntarle si esto que nos está comentando es un delito y adicionalmente, ¿qué va a hacer usted para combatir esta situación? Bueno, hasta ahorita nosotros no hemos logrado hablar con una víctima. Entonces, para nosotros no podemos decir definitivamente uh, qué, es, qué es el delito, qué es, qué es el número y el nombre del delito. Porque solamente no, hasta ahorita no hablamos con, un, con una víctima. Sí estamos hablando con una abogada que está representando a varias de las víctimas, pero quisiéramos que, que poder hablar con ellos directamente para poder averiguar qué fue lo que ellos vieron aquí en nuestro condado, qué fue lo que, lo que pasó, qué fue lo que les dijeron, y de ahí podemos averiguar qué son los delitos. Pero sí sabemos que ahorita este caso molesta a, a, a muchas personas en nuestro país y se puede entender por qué les molesta. Estas personas no estaban haciéndole nada a nadie. Ellos solamente estaban aquí viviendo legalmente, buscando nueva vida, buscando mejor condiciones para vivir. Y alguien vino de aquí, abusó de su confianza y, y ya los, llevó, los llevaron para Florida. Y luego de ahí les, los llevaron para, para Massachusetts. Y para mí eso fue un abuso de, de la confianza de esas personas. Ellas solamente eh, estaban buscando uh, nueva vida, mejor vida, estaban buscando trabajo y alguien abusó de eso y, y pues uh, los hizo pasar por, por, uh, por a lo menor una vergüenza, uh, pero sí sé que los pusieron a riesgo de vida en llevándoles, ya, llevándolos hasta allá solamente para hacer puntos políticos uh, en una campaña política. Entonces, para nosotros... Eso es, es algo que nos, nosotros necesitamos, deberíamos uh, investigar y luego de allí vamos a averiguar qué es, qué es la, el delito, si, si se aplica. Pero por último, si me permite, ¿qué le diría a todas las personas que lo están escuchando y que están preocupadas de esta situación y que, como usted dice, se sintieron abusados de su confianza? Bueno, ahorita nosotros estamos para poder averiguar un mensaje para similar al, al mensaje que nosotros mandamos hace, hace varios meses a, a México, Centroamérica, un video que nosotros uh, producimos, nomás para dirigirles a, a, al público que por favor no vengan para acá, porque hay personas que están tomando ventaja de la, de la situación. Este es una, uh, un ejemplo de eso. Entonces nosotros ahorita estamos trabajando con LULAC uh, para poder averiguar qué son los mensajes que les podemos mandar a otros países para darles, uh, para darles avisar que hay que tener pendiente con quién estén hablando aquí, porque obviamente hay personas aquí que tienen intenciones malas y que bueno, sí, solamente van a abusar de ellos, uh, pa, no solamente para, para ganar puntos en una elección. Gracias, Chef. Gracias. Hey, Sheriff. Um, Jacob Beltran with the Express News here. What can you tell us about how this investigation has been working for you? Are you talking to these uh, migrants one by one or how is that working? No, what we're talking what we're talking to right now is we're talking to an attorney. So these folks are still on the East Coast uh, and, and we're we've been talking to an attorney that's representing at least some of them. I can't say she's representing them all, but she is representing some of them. And uh, what we're hoping is to be able to get Uh, as close to a firsthand uh, account of what they went through while here in our county. Uh, we want to know what, what, was what was promised to them. What, if anything, did they sign? Did they even understand the document that was put in front of them if they signed something? Or was this strictly a predatory measure, somebody coming and preying upon people that are here, minding their own business and are here legally, not bothering a soul, but somebody saw fit to come from another state hunt them down, prey upon them, and then take advantage of their desperate situation just for the sake of political theater, just for the sake of making some sort of a statement uh, and putting people's lives in danger. I believe people need to be held accountable for it to the extent possible. Uh, at this point, I'm not able to definitively say, here's the statute that they broke, either federal, state, or local. But what I can tell you is it's wrong. Just from a human rights perspective, what was done to these folks is wrong. Uh, from now on out, we're hoping to talk to some of these, these victims and witnesses firsthand to find out what was said, what was done, how were you lured into this, uh, and then the full extent of how they were placed in harm's way. Uh, at that point, we will make the determination if there was any criminal activity. Certainly, I can tell you right now, the allegations that we've heard is absolutely distasteful. It's disgusting. It's an abuse of, of, of human rights. But I would like to, to, to find out sooner rather than later what charges, if any, are going to apply and to whom.
Um, have you spoken with anybody who, uh, so you mentioned 50 earlier, have you spoken with anybody who was offered but didn't accept that? We have not, um, but we're very early in the investigation. Earlier today, I met with my folks uh, assigned to organized crime who are going to be making the rounds. Uh, and so my understanding is that there's already some non-governmental organizations that are that have been uh, conducting some, some questioning with these folks uh, that, that may have been witnesses uh, to something similar. So we would ask anybody with information on this case to email us at bcsotips at bear.org. That's bcsotips at bear.org. Uh, or they can also call our organized crime division at 210-335-GANG, 335-G-A-N-G. Uh, and they can leave a tip. They can remain anonymous if they'd like to. But certainly we're trying to talk to as many witnesses as we possibly can to get a better handle on what, if any, uh, or, you know, criminal activity occurred while in this county. And forgive me, Sheriff, I'm still trying to familiarize myself with these folks too, but weren't they also already here uh, uh, seeking refuge in the United States from some persecution or did I mishear that? No, I mean, my understanding is that they that they were. I know that there's some really unfavorable conditions to, to be kind about it in Venezuela. And I think these were all Venezuelan immigrants. If not, if not all of them, then the majority of them were Venezuelan immigrants. But look, they've already had a rough life. They've already suffered enough that, you know, they wouldn't be here if everything was was hunky dory in their in their country of origin. And so then to come here and think that they have found the American dream because some person uh, who's strictly preying upon them offers them, you know, everything. The streets are paved with gold where we're going and you're going to walk into your dream job and everything's going to be great. You're going to be able to support your family. All your worries are over with. Just get on this this shuttle and then this plane. Um, only to find out that they were just made fools of and, and you know, are subjected to, you know, a, a video op, photo op, that's enraging. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how you look at it, it's enraging. I believe there's some criminal activity involved here, but at present, you know, we're just, we're, we're, we're trying to keep an open mind and we're going to investigate to find out, to determine what, what exactly laws, what laws were broken if that does, be the, if that does turn out to be the case. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Anything else, guys? Sheriff Salazar, it's Paul Flav with Texas Public Radio. So to date, have you interviewed any of the actual uh, migrants who were transported? And is it just this uh, one lawyer that you've talked to? And can you tell us his name? It, it is one lawyer that, that we've talked to. Um, her name is Rachel Self. She's, a, she's an attorney out of Boston. Uh, we have not spoken to any of her clients just yet. They're all still on the East Coast. And my understanding is they're being cared for. My understanding is that they're safe. Uh, at present, though, one of the conversations that we had today at, with our organized crime group was how do we get firsthand information? Do we just get the attorney to send us sworn affidavits? Are we going to have to send somebody there to, to the East Coast to get the information? We, we just don't know. That is the intent. We're moving forward toward that. The communications with the attorney have been that. But at present, we haven't gotten that worked out on, on how and when we're going to get to talk to these people. But su suffice it to say, we're going to have to get first-hand accounts to determine what what was what occurred exactly thank you thank you sheriff this is yami with kbb and woai let me ask you i mean you're you're an elected official you're a democrat by party affiliation does this have anything to do with democrat or republican at this point right now and has the white house or anybody from the white house called you on this case yet um, look, yeah, I mean, this doesn't have anything to do with political affiliation. I'm actually not on the ballot this time. And, uh, but I can tell you right now, if in the event, uh, this person that, that is suspected of this, any of these people happen to be of the same party of affiliation as me, if they violated civil rights, like to the extent that I believe occurred, they'd be going to jail as soon as practical. So I can tell you right now, uh, political affiliation has nothing to do with it. It's doing the right thing. And traveling from another state to prey upon people that are just already in a desperate situation and then dumping them off at the risk of, of life and limb to them and to their children, uh, that's a no-go for me, no matter what your party affiliation is. And has the White House reached out to you or any other agencies here in South Texas to see if you're investigating or anything of the sort? Or is this... Uh, they 
they, they have not uh, reached out to us. I mean, we'd welcome it. I've, I've certainly made some contacts at the White House over the course of the last couple of months, as you all know. Um, I'm more than happy to talk to them about this case because truth be told, uh, there's going to need to be some coordinating. I mean, granted, while um, obviously we believe there's a there's a high possibility that that the laws were broken here in the state of Texas in Bear County, uh, the fact is there may also be some parallel um, laws being broken on the on the federal side. And so we have great great relationships with all of our federal partners here. I've got deputies assigned to various federal task forces that they're they're cross designated with those federal agencies. Uh, but with that being said, at some point, absolutely, parts of this case are going to have to go federal, and there's going to have to be some some uh, coordination that goes along with that. So absolutely, I would welcome the White House or anybody else from the federal side to give us a call and, and help us out with whatever they can. Are there any other questions on this case, y'all? Uh, Tracy wanted to ask, will BCSO work with other public safety agencies? that may also be investigating, how does that work? Tracy wanted, Tracy is asking, and I'll just restate the question, will BCSO be, help, be working with other uh, law enforcement agencies uh, that, that wanna help and how does that work? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we're, we're happy to say that we work with any and all law enforcement agencies when, when we have concurrent jurisdictions on things and, and uh, there's always strength in numbers. It's always better to share resources and personnel and facilities uh, and intelligence when need be. Uh, matter of fact, my organized crime folks that are working on this case are assigned over at the TAG, where just about every other law enforcement agency in the area is represented there. We've all got a footprint there at the TAG. And so absolutely, with, with my TAG folks, that's the beauty of it. When they need help from another agency, it's just as easy as walking over to the next, de the next desk or the next cubicle over. I had one more question, Sheriff, and I'm asking it so you can respond. I obviously know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyways. Sure. So to be clear, whether someone has documents, parole documents into this country or come in without going through Border Patrol, are they still protected by all the laws of the land? Look, anybody that's in this country, uh, whether, whether documented or undocumented, has certain rights. Um, you know, so, so yes, if, if somebody's here and they're undocumented, right, some would call them illegal, illegally here in the country, they're undocumented. Um, they still have rights to not be victimized. They still have rights to not be preyed upon. They absolutely still have rights to not be lured to another state under false pretenses with, with promises of a better life. With that being said, these people were here legally. They were documented at this point. Uh, they were not permitted to work, but they were here legally. They had a right to walk around the streets just like you or me. And they had a right to not be preyed upon and, and played for a fool and transported halfway across the, the country just for the sake of, of, a, of, a, of a media event, of a video opportunity. That's a tragedy at the very least. Uh, on the, on the, at, at worst, it's probably some sort of a crime. What was, it, what was promised to these people and what they were used uh, for and so absolutely, we're going to to discover uh, to what extent the the law can hold these people accountable, and then we're going to do it. Sheriff, disculpe, nos podría repetir esta misma respuesta en español, por favor? Sí, que que mira, aunque al, mientras que aquí en este país uh, sean documentados o indocument, indocumentados, una persona tiene ciertos derechos, aunque sean indocumentados. Uh, estas personas Estaban aquí legalmente. No estaban molestando a nadie. Ellos tenían el mismo derecho de caminar por la calle que, que tú o yo, que somos ciudadanos aquí en este país. Ellos estaban aquí legalmente. Nadie debería venir para acá y, y echarles mentiras a estas personas solamente para meterlos a un avión y llevarlos para dos otros estados solamente por una oportunidad uh, para, para ponerlos en la cámara y pon, pasarlos por, por vergüenza, que, que hagan que pasen por vergüenzas. Uh, los pusieron a riesgo de vida, los pusieron a riesgo de perder sus, sus niños, sus hijos, solamente por, uh, a, por agarrar puntos uh, en una campaña electoral. Entonces, para mí, eso es un delito y nosotros vamos a averiguar quiénes son las personas responsables y, vamos, y no vamos a, a, a parar hasta que esas personas... Uh, sean arrestadas por lo que hicieron. Gracias, Sheriff. 
Gracias. Sheriff no, Salazar, one follow-up, I apologize. And I know you said you wouldn't talk about suspects, but TBR has learned that one of the suspects that has been named um, is in Tampa, Florida. What's the process for you being able to interview, ascertain where they're at, go to see them, et cetera? Well, look, we've got fugitives uh, in, in several of our cases that are in other parts of the country, other parts of the world. Um, we know full well that criminals don't respect boundaries, right? They're going to go wherever and, and, and wherever they, th they feel like they can to escape accountability. Uh, on the other hand, we will go wherever we need to to investigate criminal activity. And so if somebody's in Florida uh, and they need to be brought here to be brought to justice, that's just paperwork at that point. And I certainly don't mind doing that. But I do understand that there are, there are some folks that have ties to other states that also have local ties here. And so those local ties are what we're investigating. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. If there's any follow-up questions, Johnny can certainly answer them for you on social media. We will keep everybody updated on the developments of this case as it, as it shakes out and as we're able to. Thank you so much for joining us today. Be blessed.